Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and businesses that I think are really cool. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Okay, I'm telling you all up front, this is going to be a very different sort of interview. We're going to be talking about the educational system and the HBCUs, and I have an HBCU graduate that I want to introduce to you. You all, please welcome... Troy Smith. Hey, Troy. Oh, everybody, hold your applause. Thank you. I know. Okay. I, I, I know. Y'all noticed <laughs> we have the same last name. Well, Troy is my youngest son. So, and he is an HBCU graduate. He graduated from Alabama A&M University. Whoop, whoop. And so he has opted to talk to us a little bit about his educational experience. So, Troy, really, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, of course. So let's start off with, okay, so you graduated high school in a public school, predominantly everything, right? And then you went off to Alabama, right? University of Alabama, everybody, roll tide. Roll tide. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you went over to A&M. So tell me about what happened when you went from, you know, public high school to, Al to um, University of Alabama and then going to HBCU. What kind of differences did you see coming through that? Um, just to really start more from like the beginning so you have a more sense of the story. So, you know, growing up in El Paso, Texas, you know, 90% predominantly um, Hispanic, you know, Mexican, you know, right there next to Mexico. And then from there to the University of Alabama, which is predominantly white, to an HBCU, which is, you know, the name historically black college or university you know, predominantly um, black. So at every turn, it was just a uh, a culture shock for my norm. So first growing up in El, um, in El Paso, going to the high schools and stuff there, um, everybody's a minority. So it's never really any issues of, you know, race or get along with it. Mostly everybody just gets along. You know, of course, there's the few, you know, everybody fights and argues and stuff like that. It's people, but you know, for the most sense, there's a community in sense. But then mm -hmm. to flip and turn and go to Alabama, and the only thing that I knew about that school was obviously football, just like anybody how anybody else would. Yeah. But just to see that culture shock of just being in a predominantly white um, community and how they interact with each other and think about things and do stuff, and it's just it was just different. Mm -hmm. And you know. Um, but I personally just didn't like it just for the aspect of there's no sense of community there. Maybe right. people find their community in different other ways, you know, whether it be clubs, fraternities, or, you know, all that. Yeah. But for me, it yeah. just didn't stick. And it was fine because I thought it was just college. And then we had a, uh, a family friend, um, Mr. Derek McGowan. Yeah. He uh, told me about a &M. You know, of course, I've never heard about it in my life. Um, when most people think about HBCUs, they think about maybe like Howard, right. Spellman, you know, Rambling, Rambling, you know, all, yeah, the, the big same, one, the same five. But yeah. It's like, you know, there's hundreds or not hundreds, but about a little bit over a hundred um, HBC out there. And, you know, one of them happens to be Alabama A&M, you know, mm -hmm. repping on a shirt, go Bulldogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and then being there was a culture shock too, because uh, I had never been around, um, that many black people in my life if anything yeah. it would just be from you know church or you yeah. know maybe going family events and stuff like that but that's right. just about about it and you know it's like mm -hmm. the same you know 50 black people i've known my whole life and right. now it's just <laughs> and then you go and uh switch it to where you know that's my whole community and yeah. just to really just learn about myself because i've never really saw myself as a um, black men before until I actually went off to college because at first you know it's very apparent going to Alabama right but then too it's just like it's different when you learn it from your own people and standpoint and stuff like that what it really is to be you and it's not a color it's not a specific thing that everybody does or right. says and agrees on it's just just to find out that honestly just saying that black people are just 
people. Right. There's black nerds, black people, like, black everything is just right. It just happened to be this black color. in it. It's so weird, though. I mean, I, I like what you said. You know, it's not being black is not the color. It's just folks is folks, but you don't know it unless you know it. So when you left El Paso and you went to Alabama, now you've never lived in the South before. Did you have any issues as far as, if you will, racism that you came across in Alabama? Um, oh, you know, of course. And it's funny, I would always have this conversation with, um, you know, classmates and stuff like that at right. any school where I'd be like, uh, oh yeah, I'm from Texas. And they're like, well, Texas is in the South too. I was like, not, <laughs> not like that. And it's just, uh, my thing was just coming from like at the Paso community where it's so right. everybody's like almost like family to where it was not an issue to, you know, you don't have to second guess where you, whether you can help somebody. Right. And so that was most of the uh, racism that I dealt with. Right. Or most, and I wouldn't even call it racism. It's, a lot of it is just ignorance. Yeah, that's because probably a better deal people, with it. People yeah. just do not know. So that's what mm -hmm. said. They only see what they think about people. All their thoughts come from TV and other people's, you know, accounts. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. really their own. That's so true. it's just like, I remember, and I, you probably remember because I had called you that night too. I remember. Where uh, the first time I ever really felt it was, it was a, a group of old people. I was getting off, first off, let me back up. I was working at pizza at the time, so getting right. off super late, mm -hmm. and there was this group of elderly people just under an underpass, and their car just turned off. But mm -hmm. you know, you either take the light or just there's no, but there's no reason that you should just be sitting. Right. Here. So I thought their car broke down or something like that. So I pulled off to the side, you know, to help. And so as I walked to the car to help them, right. they locked the they locked the car on me, and, and it was know. just and it just it just shocked me. But then mm -hmm. I still was just like, oh, do you guys need help? And they're like oh, no, we're good, starts their car and takes off. And it's just like, wow, that was weird. I, I, and I remember that night when you called and you said, I don't know if I should be offended or hurt. And I remember we talked about that because like you said, coming from someplace like here in El Paso, we don't really have that. Do you remember the time that you were stopped by the cops because you were walking home late? Do you remember that night? Because uh, that was before, I, yeah, before I had a car when I was walking home from my job at Alexaxi. So it was just literally right across, my apartment was across the street. Yeah. So there had been break-ins at uh, the Kmart that's in between there. And mm -hmm. so he, had, he would stop me, you know, full, it's not like I changed before I got off work, full Zaxby's uniform, that's all you see. And it's just like, oh, I just have to run it just just because. I'm just like, you saw me just come from work. So it's just, yeah. but then, it, you know, it's seems like yeah, it was just weird. But then, you know, now it's more of just, I would say I don't even deal with like racism or anything mm -hmm. that much. It's like mm -hmm. I said, previously stated, it was just more of just dealing with ignorance. Yeah. So even just being at work, it's just the preconceived notions that people have of black people and stuff yeah, like that. That's true. And so just, now, you know, moving ahead, you left the University of Alabama, Roll Tide, and you went over to Alabama A&M. How different was that for you? Now, I, I know it's going to be strange for people to know, but you've been a black guy the majority of your life. But this is the first time you've been in a community, like you said earlier, of that many black folks that were not your family or friends. How did you deal with that right away? So funny story was I didn't know it was a HBCU mm. when I first got there. Because I don't know if you remember, but we visited during spring break. So yeah. the only people there are the professors. And then, you know, the professors mm -hmm. are always going to be diverse. And especially because, like, the head of engineering at the time was this um, Indian dude. So, and that's the guy that we talked to. And, of mm -hmm. course, on the websites, it doesn't say HBCU. And, of course, all they have is the diversity pictures. Right. So unless you know, you d really don't know. Mm -hmm. So then, so I was like, okay, cool. I can go to this small school or whatever. And then the first day I got there, I was just looking around, just <laughs> black people doing here, you know, and the funny story, because it was during like the time of the, the Ferguson marches. So I was just like, right. oh, I got all the black people just out, just showing their support or cause, uh, you know, and then, you know, day or two went by and I was still just seeing just, okay. Like, but <laughs> the overall sense was just, it was almost this like uh, being back 
in El Paso, just like that sense of community. Yeah. Um, when I was going to the University of Alabama, when people would go to class, it was just just that no one was talking to each other or anything. It was just you really know, head down and keep it moving. Head down. Exactly. And right. the phone just. But mm-hmm. then when I went there, people were actually like talking and commuting and laughing. And mm-hmm. um, the only weird one was me, because <laughs> I know as a rule, you're not really supposed to walk on the grass. You know, I was just I was just like, trying to get to class. So I would walk across the grass and everybody just looking at me just like, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where is this guy from? <laughs> yeah. But, but you, and, you know, just learning all the different lessons that I learned there in, yeah. invaluable just to not just school but just learning to be in a community of people yeah. that applies to you know even still mm-hmm. now just how you because cre- life is what you make it and it's just you can't do any of it on your own that's so true that's so good now son so for those of you who don't know he went to school for engineering and so he's a mechanical engineer and he now has a master's in engineering as well. So needless to say, mommy's super proud. Um, but talk to me then, Troy, about the education that you got at the different schools at the University of Alabama and then what you got maybe differently at, you know, at Alabama A&M. And did it matter that it was an HBCU? It, well, I'll, I'll answer your second question first and then go back into the okay. uh, so yes, it does matter that it's an HBC, HBCU because um, the thing, um, one thing I've definitely learned is that, um, how do I explain it? What is that word? The uh, networking, excuse me, there okay. we go. <laughs> White people are born knowing how to network. Wow, born yeah. knowing son, really? Born, because it's, this is what they do. I know so and so, and so you're trying to do this. How so and so is an engineer too? So we're gonna link you guys up, and then you mm-hmm. go and talk to him, and he's gonna help you get in the door and do whatever. Right. But for black people, since it's crazy to say that we're still on a lot of firsts in our families, so yeah, it's say most likely there's not gonna be another black engineer in your family, let alone you know right. another engineer that can even help you. Mm -hmm. so going to this school they teach you how to network and it's not just talking to people but it's just like how to dress simple things we'd have it on every thursdays would be professional dress day Mm -hmm. and it it wasn't just for the sake of just getting dressed and looking nice but it was to teach you like you know when you're out in the workforce and do so this is how you present yourself and then you know, the other professors and stuff would like would be on you be like, oh, that's not how you want to tie your tie. Or if you're doing Mm -hmm. this, you know, when you sit down, unbutton your suit jacket, you know, yeah, simple, simple things that you don't 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 know if you didn't know. Yeah. Bless your heart. You came out of this house, you poor thing. (laughs) And they would always have a professional speaker every during lunch to, you know, teach some type of skill, you know, whether Mm -hmm. it be talking or listening or getting your promoting your ideas you know simple things to like a normal person doesn't Mm -hmm. not I wouldn't say normal to anybody wouldn't make sense but it's just like some people just generally do not know and so that's the big thing this school gives a lot of people first chances yeah that's good just so they get that first chance but also get Mm -hmm. that first chance to excel and proceed so it's funny anytime somebody else from my um school comes and works either at my job or different right. they always have the story about how basically A&M over prepares you so you have to tone it down <laughs> bring it so down a bit huh <laughs> right you don't have to wear a suit every day it's just like you can wear this every day it's fine as an engineer right. or you know slow down your work because you're going to work yourself out of a job you're doing wow. good like <laughs> yeah that's um, amazing so let me so, ask you who is an HBC you for is it for anybody is it just black kids who would you say would benefit from going to an HBCU? Of course, anybody would benefit from going to HBCU. And there's definitely, there's a whole bunch of documentaries about um, white people that go to these places yeah. and that, you know, have their eyes opened of how mm-hmm. these experiences have changed, you know, their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, but anybody, because it's more of a sense of community than when you go to a bigger school, just right. because, you know, smaller class sizes. So, you know, mm-hmm. there's more one-on-one. And because of that, as students, we actually end up learning more Ah. because 
we're all looking out for each other. So if a few mm-hmm. of us don't get something before a test, since there's only a few of us, we right. can now go to the professor and talk how the same way you would talk to your employer. If if y'all's group couldn't finish the project in time, just like, oh, we don't right. get it. And it's not a sense of being lazy or anything like that, but you learn right. better when you collaborate. Because, yeah. you know, somebody might get a concept better and then so he could teach it or he or she could teach that to his right. peers and, you know, so on and so forth. That's kind of cool. So, Troy, if somebody wanted to say, you know, hey, I want to go to an HBCU, what would you recommend for them? How would they do that research? Um, so specifically for HBCU, um, the, I would say the first thing always find out what you want to do. So if you want to do mostly like engineering, for example, yes, I would recommend going to FAMU, mm-hmm. Alabama A&M, go mm-hmm. Bulldogs, you know, <laughs> something like that. Or, you know, you want to do veterinarian, make sure you go to, you know, Tuskegee, mm-hmm. you know, find out what you want to do and find out who does it the best. Because okay. you just don't want to go to an HBCU and mm-hmm. you want to do engineering, but they don't offer engineering. And then you're just there, yeah. you know, yeah. wasting your time. And and what was your second question? About, you know, what else can, how would they go about doing that research? Sorry, it's a Amber Alert. Or, mm-hmm. Okay, doing that research. Um, hey, the internet is a wonderful thing. What you so say just now? <laughs> start, start from the beginning. So yeah. if you don't know anything, just look up, maybe start with the HBCUs in state. So HBCUs mm-hmm. in Texas. And now that you have, but like five or six options, you see what they're known for. Because right. the great thing, there's always lists for mm-hmm. everything. And, um, you know, you can look up the best top 10 engineering HBCUs. And there's okay. always, gonna, you know, and then do your mm-hmm. research, just, you know, get two or three sites and mm-hmm. see if they all kind of line up. And if they do, you base off your decision, based off of, you know. Yeah. And, and then mean, once you do. So mm-hmm. Once you do um, try, it's hard, but try to find somebody that's, you know, went there or knows something about yeah. the area. Cause also part of going to any, any college mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. learning the area. Cause yeah, you might do it, but then it might not be a city divisive or anything to you because yeah. you know, you're just there trying to pay bills instead of being at class. Cause it's so expensive to live yeah, there. Right. Right. So. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this. Now you are an HBCU alum. You've been out of school for a little bit. How do you give back knowing what you know now? The best way I give back is just um, always staying linked up with, you know, just like you're saying, because one thing my, the professors I really knew would do, they would Mm -hmm. get your contact information right when you graduate and they help too because they, you know, email you and they'd be like, oh, I know so-and-so works for this company and we have a oh, whole wow. bunch of students about to do an internship or, mm-hmm. you know, just simple stuff like that. Or if you meet, the best way I do it is I always meet somebody random the same way I would, um, I go out to eat and they see, I might have like the A&M shirt on or like sure. something from my company and they'd be like, oh, you're an engineer. It's like, you're too. It's like, oh yeah, I um, go to A&M and I do engineering too. Uh, and I'm like, because per- some of them don't know, is like, ask for my, you know, contact. And if they yeah. don't, then be like, here's my email, mm-hmm. email me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just simply just yeah. talk. So that's the best way I yeah. give back is just passing so on. So it's about information. paying it forward. Basically, because that's the same thing that happened to me. Yeah. My family friend happened to tell me about it yeah. and I went. And so it's the same way when, because um, now, you know, a lot of them are, usually like sophomores or juniors. So it's just like, oh, have you done your internships? Have you done this? Yeah. You know, give them the rest, the same recipe I had to mm-hmm. succeed for yeah. them to do it too. Because um, at this, you know, everybody has a 3.0 and stuff like that. But how sure. do you distinguish yourself from all the other candidates that they're wow. trying to get? That's amazing. You guys, look, this conversation is going to go on more because he'll be home soon. So we'll get to chat some more. But Before you go, don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up. And don't worry, all of Troy's contact information will be in the description below. So as you heard, he'll pay it forward. If you're interested, reach out to him. Son, before I let you go, 
We got to play our game. <laughs> All right. So this game is called This or That. And it's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of one or two things. And you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. You ready to play? <laughs> Let's do this. Flowers or plants? Plants. Hotel or tent? A, a hotel. I, I know, y'all. He is my kid. I'm just saying. All right. Water park or amusement park? Amusement park. Water parks are gross. <laughs> We're not even going to get into that, okay? Practical joker or I don't play like that? <laughs> Next yeah. question. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is such a practical joker, y'all. Just so you know, it's horrible. All right. Candlelight or moonlight? Mm, that's, okay, that's a good one. Because, mm -hmm. you know, it could go either way. But most likely probably just candlelight because, you know, candles smell good, too. And yeah, I don't know what this true. moon smells like. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's a candle for you know anyway mm -hmm. so are you a planner or do you make it up as you go a planner when i can be but you know a lot of things in life you could just yeah do you you know it's it, as a random question as an engineer is the stereotype that engineers are planners oh engineers are not planners really that's surprising it, I, I it's just have to lose. because they use a lot of uh you know, synonyms and analogies and stuff like that. It makes it sound like they know a bunch of stuff, but because <laughs> once you actually know what they're talking about, it's like, it's a really bunch of nothing. Really? Troy, you're giving that. away all your <laughs> engineering secrets, bro. Just mm, saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Go all day or I need a nap. Oh, a nap for sure. Yeah, that's true. So are you pecan or pecan? <laughs> um, pecan. Are you really? I'm surprised. Okay. When you meet somebody, do you notice their eyes first or their smile? Their eyes. Hmm, surprising. Are you a words of affirmation guy or an acts of service guy? Huh. A little bit of both. For somebody I don't know, it would be more affirmation. If somebody I do know, it would be, hmm. you know. That's interesting. Okay. And now, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self? Relax. Just, mm. just, just, just relax. It's always all going to work out if you try. So. Yeah, that's so true. That and get a Bitcoin. Just one dollar. <laughs> we could have been rich. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Bitcoin. There you guys. And you're getting this as well. Troy, thanks so much, honey, for joining me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. It's no problem. They said we could have talked right. all day. <laughs> that's true. We sure could have. And we will later. Y'all, that's it for this time. But don't worry. We'll see you guys next time on Extra.